One of the things I'd like to do is to connect a professional logic analyzer to my 386 build. You know, I've been using my own little homegrown debugger tool with an STM32, and that's been working fine. But I want to go with some faster speeds and, and really analyze the different signals and see how my system is working or not working as I move forward. So to do that, I need to figure out how do I connect, actually connect a professional logic analyzer to my system. Now, real quick before I get into that, in the last video I had some helpful comments. I have made a couple of adjustments uh, so far to this uh, specific uh, layout. And what I've done is I've actually shifted, instead of a single PCI connection off to the right, and again, this is just a physical connector for me to get signals off of my system, I'm going to a pair. And with that, I'm adding a whole bunch of grounds. Uh, so I'll have a pair of these connectors down here, that pair, for every signal, I have a, a corresponding ground, which is probably more than I need. Uh, but I had extra pins. Either it wouldn't fit in a single connector or I have plenty of space with two connectors. So with two connectors, I have lots of grounds. I also went to this Euro DIN, the pair of Euro DINs connecting my upper board and lower board, uh, which I still don't have aligned yet, but I'll get to that later. Uh, but those will allow me to snap my upper board, lower board together. I did add one ground for every pair of signals. So the middle row of all of those connectors, those four Eurodin connectors, is all grounds. So hopefully that will help because one of the comments was the Eurodin has a 10 megahertz limitation. Uh, so I'll see uh, at what point I, I run into issues with speed. Um, and, and if I do run into an issue, then I might have to rethink that connector and find a different solution. Uh, but with those changes, what I want to now do is get this connected. So this is an Agilent 1680A that I purchased uh, and uh, did a little bit of just cleanup on it uh, just to, to refurbish it a bit. Uh, but I want to be able to connect this and read out, you know, let's say about 100 signals. That's what I'm, I currently have going into my STM32 debugger uh, so that I can do analysis with this logic analyzer. Now, this logic analyzer has eight pods, and each pod has a ribbon cable, essentially, that I can connect to something. Um, now, at the end of that is just a 40-pin connector, and it looks something like this. And I think typically, and I'm brand new to this logic analyzer, so I'm learning it, but it seems like there are different things or adapters you would plug this into that would give you breakouts or uh, maybe connect it directly to a circuit, uh, something on board uh, in my 386 design, for example. And that might give me something that you know looks like a 40-pin connector like this that I could place either on my 386 directly, or in my case, what I'm going to do is do that as a plug-in card that I can just plug into the system and get quick access to all of the signals that I want to analyze. Now, one thing uh, as I'm reading through this is I, I can't or I shouldn't directly connect these signals to my system. And what I should have is an isolation network for every signal. Now, if you look at this off to the right, you're going to see that there are 16 data lines and a clock line. So that's your 17 different connections that you have to work with per connector. And so that gives me the total 136 signals that I could work with. Now, I'll be using the clock, and I'll probably use clock 2 or clock from my 386, so CLK2 or CLK, as this incoming clock signal. And then I'll have 16 data lines per pod. You know, so six, 16 times 8 gives me my 128 signals, really, that I'm going to be able to work with. But for every one of those signals, I need an isolation network. And this is what is recommended. is It's a pair of resistors and a capacitor. So a 250-ohm and a 90.9-kilo-ohm resistor plus an 8.2 picofarad capacitor. And... If I could find these, uh, Agilent used to have these ICs, their surface mount ICs, part number 5062-7396, that have six of these isolation networks built into each IC. And that would be absolutely awesome to find these. However, I've done some searching and I, I don't think these are available anywhere. Uh, and if anybody knows that these are available somewhere at a reasonable price, let me know. But I'm going to assume this is just old stuff. Uh, it wasn't popular enough to have sitting in inventory anywhere at this point. 
which means I need to now do this with discrete components. And that might look something like this. So this is what they recommend as an onboard isolation network. And you can see you bring the signal in. Let's just say I want to read address line zero. So A0, that would come in as signal, go through the 250 ohm resistor. And then in parallel, I have this 90.9K and an 8.2 picofarad uh, capacitor. And then that goes to the logic analyzer input along with the ground. Now, I need to do that for all 17 connections per 40 pin ribbon. So that's the 16 data lines and the clock line is how I understand it. Um, because I might use that clock line as, well, A, bringing in clock, but also as just another signal. So I think it also has to go through this uh, isolation network. Well, if I want to really support the full capability of this logic analyzer, I need 136 of these. So 136 of these setups, that's a lot of components, uh, but that's, I think, where I'm at, what I get to work with. So I am setting it up something like this. I'm going to use a 220 ohm instead of a 250 ohm resistor. I'm hoping that's close enough. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is I don't have 250 ohm uh, resistors. I have 220 in a surface mount package that will, will be something I can just use and it really not cost me much here. Um, same for the 90.9K. I have those in surface mount and I have the 8.2 picofarad capacitors in surface mount. Now, one thing, I don't know if it makes a difference, and I definitely would look for any feedback from, from any of you here. In the schematic on the left, they just show uh, a non-polarized cap. In the diagram in the upper right, they show a polarized capacitor for that 8.2. Uh, I don't know how I would have a, an 8.2 picofarad polarized capacitor uh, with surface mount, and I'm not about to go track down all of these 136 electrolytics uh, to put onto a board. Um, and maybe there are uh, 8.2 electrolytic, uh, 8.2 picofarad electrolytics that I can get that are surface mount. I, I did some initial, initial searching and I wasn't having any luck. So I'm going to go with a non-polarized, you know, just a ceramic type of surface mount capacitor. I hope that's not an issue. If that is an issue, I'll have to rethink that, but I would look for any feedback from any of you that have worked with these types of isolation networks before. Uh, and if that's important that I need to, to get a polarized capacitor there instead. So here's a small PCB I put together that'll let me bring in the 16 data lines and the clock, run it through those isolation networks and then directly connect the ribbon cable for one of the pods, one of the eight pods coming from my logic analyzer. And then I have this version here that will snap into the actual lower 386 board that I have. And that has all 136, or actually the version you're seeing here has 128 isolation network networks on it. I still need to add the nine for the clock signals yet. Um, but what that's gonna let me do is just take this card, snap it into my lower board uh, bring everything through and connect my eight pod cables from my logic analyzer directly to this card, which then is directly plugged into my 386 system. And so when I want to analyze, I can just plug this in, pull whatever signals I want. When I'm done, I unplug this and there really are no other connections. So it's a, a really quick plug it in and unplug it. Um, so I just decided to just do all discrete components here, all surface mount. I'm doing uh, 0603s for the resistors and 0805s for the capacitors. Uh, so that will take a little bit of time laying that out uh, with my microscope and then running it through the oven. But hopefully this is a card then that I can just snap into my system and quickly connect into my logic analyzer. Uh, once I get these two PCBs in, uh, A, I got to do a little bit more cleanup, like I mentioned. This large PCB, I, I forgot to put in the uh, network isolation for all the clock signals, so I got to get those added real quick. Uh, but then once I get these in, then I can start experimenting with this Agilent logic analyzer a bit and see if I can learn you know, how to use it effectively. Mm -hmm.